Uh, hi everybody, welcome uh, to our very first Facebook Live education event. Uh, my name is Jennifer and I am the education manager here at the Blue Ridge Wildlife Center. For those of you who are new to us, thank you for joining. Uh, we are a full service wildlife hospital and rehabilitation center in Virginia that takes in about 2200 wild patients a year that have been sick, injured, or orphaned and we do our best to heal their wounds, to raise them, and then release them back into the wild. Uh, with the current health crisis going on, we have uh, had to cancel all of our education events for uh, the foreseeable future, and as a result, we decided we would do some education for you uh, over the internet. Uh, today, we're going to be meeting some of our ambassadors. We'll talk about their natural history and their stories. If you guys have any questions, feel free to, to ask them as we go along, and we'll try to answer as many as we can. So our ambassadors today are our uh, education screech owls. So there are over 200 different species of owl in the world. Uh, 19 of those species live here in North America. And in Virginia, there are four species that live here year round. The Eastern Screech Owl is the smallest uh, of those owls that lives here. So we have two different Eastern Screech Owls here with us today. The first one we're gonna talk about over here is Patches. Patches is our This is our gray eastern screech owl. There you go. You're not saying this perch. There you go. So patches here is our gray eastern screech owl. They come in gray like patches or uh, red like dopey behind us. And that has to do with their camouflage. So the gray and their feathers helps them to hide against different kinds of bark. So the gray here, they blend in really well with oak trees, and the red fades blend in really well with pine trees. So depending on the kind of trees you have in the forest will determine the color screech owls that you have hiding in that forest. So you can see Patches here has his ear tufts up. These are these groups of feathers on the top of their head. They're not his actual ears. Uh, they are part of his camouflage. So when he wants to hide, he'll go up against a tree, he'll get all nice and skinny, he'll cover up his uh, glinty part, so the talons and the beak, and he'll put those ear tufts up to give him a more rugged appearance so he looks like a broken branch. Sounds like some people are having a hard time hearing you. Oh, okay. Um, been told we're having a hard time hearing. I'll try to speak up. This room is very echoey and I don't want to be too loud, uh, but we'll try. <laughs> Apologies. Um, so if we can kind of take a look at his face, uh, one of the great features for owls uh, are their, um, their senses. They're one of the um, superheroes, what we call our superheroes of the, uh, of the forest. They have a lot of um, things that make it easy for them to find food and to hunt. Uh, one of those is the eyes. So you can see the size of the eyes here and what's called the facial disc. So that's this area um, just right in front of the face. And the facial disc, they have those really big eyes that are set in a bowl of feathers. So in the bottom of the bowl of feathers. And what that does is it helps bounce all available light into the eyes. So these guys can see even when there's no light in the environment, they can see by starlight alone to find their prey. Uh, they also have ears that are hidden on the edges behind. There's a dark uh, line of feathers on the side of their face there. Uh, their ears are behind that, and their ears are um, the flap that we have uh, that bounces sound forward into our ears, actually bounces sound backwards into theirs. Uh, and their ears are also offset, so ours are, ours are generally on the same plane, and that allows us to hear sound coming at us. Theirs are slightly offset. One is usually higher than the other, and this helps with their triangulation. So they can turn their head very slightly uh, until they hear it, hear a sound at the same time out of both ears. Uh, and this is how they can kind of see or hear where their prey is, um, sometimes without even seeing it. So they can hear their prey uh, and change their flight path while they're flying after it. Someone was wondering why there's a stuffed owl on the table. <laughs> uh, so this is Barnaby. Um, she is our uh, barn owl example, so we do not have an ambassador barn owl, uh, but she is one of the four species found here um, in Virginia. And owls generally are separated uh, throughout the world into typical owls, um, like the screech owls, 
barred owls, great horned owls, and then the barn owls are their own separate, uh, their own separate subspecies because of, or uh, classification um, because of the shape of their face and a couple other features that set them apart from the majority of owls. Mm -hmm. How fast can barn owls fly? That's an excellent question that I don't know the answer to. I do not know speeds of flight. Um, they can fly pretty fast, but not as fast as um, owls, or excuse me, as fast as hawks uh, or eagles. Um, speed is not really a thing that they need. They usually hunt mostly by stealth. So they have uh, feather quality that makes their uh, flight near silent, so not completely silent. There's no void of sound. Um, but the, the softness of their feathers, the slight frayed quality to the edges, and they do have a razor pattern to the very leading edge of their wing that helps them cut through air and let air kind of up through the feathers so they don't make that mooshing noise when they fly. So they prefer to sit, or what's called perch hunters, they prefer to sit and wait for food to walk underneath them uh, and then launch after it rather than hawks that are soaring hunters like to be up high uh, to see their food and then dive down for it. So they don't really need the speed uh, to catch up to things. Mm -hmm. How old is patches? Excellent question. We're not 100% sure how old Patches is. He came in as an adult, uh, and they don't have juvenile versus adult feathering like some of their birds do, so we know he was at least a year old when he came to us, and he has been, uh, he's been with us for um, about four years now, so he's at least five. He could be older than that. Uh, in the wild, they'll live to be anywhere between uh, six and eight, maybe as long as 10, if they're really good at what they do. Uh, in captivity, he could live to be between 12 and 15, maybe even older than that. So we're gonna go ahead and let Patches take a break. Not going to do Now I know you spoke about this earlier, but we had someone ask about the difference between the phases. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference? What does that mean? So the difference is the color. So Patches, as you saw, was a nice gray color. And this here is Dopey. I'm gonna pull him forward so you guys can see him a little bit better. And we have a, um, a six-year-old girl um, who is asking um, when their mating season is because she has one living in her owl box in her yard. That's great. I love that you have an owl box in your yard and that they chose to, uh, to live in it. Very difficult to get owls to move in. They're very particular about um, the owl, the boxes and the homes that they choose. So they're actually mating right now. Usually um, December, January, they pick mates. In February, March, they have uh, found a mate. They've built a nest and they are starting to lay eggs. Um, the baby should be hatching soon, um, which is very exciting. So if you see the different colors, so this is Dopey, he's that nice red color. And if they can't change colors, they're born red or gray, if that was not confusing. Um, they're born one color or the other. Um, and a question that somebody asked, I do believe that red and gray owls will um, interbreed. They don't, gray owls don't have to mate with gray owls and, and so on, they will actually mix. It really doesn't matter to them. So what does screech owls sound like when they vocalize? Uh, they make a variety of sounds. Um, the most common sound that you might hear it sounds like ponies in the woods. Um, so it, it's what's called a whinny. Let's see if I can. It's a. Uh, um, so they make that kind of noise the most, uh, but they do make a variety of other noises. Uh, and unfortunately, we're not sure what all of them mean. We're actually not sure what any of them mean. They make them all the time. Um, some of them are baby noises that only babies usually make when talking to their parents. Um, others are more adult noises, um, but it's hard for us to tell exactly what they're trying to say to each other when they do. If you guys noticed, he yawned. Nice big mouth uh, that they have. So the beak is the smallest part and the rest of it is hidden behind the feathers. And their mouth opens pretty wide so that they can swallow large pieces of food. So the food that they catch is usually smaller for them, um, small furry things like voles, shrews, mice, um, sometimes large insects, small lizards, anything that they can pretty much pick up and carry back with them. They don't want to eat out in the open. They want to make sure that they eat somewhere safe. And so you saw his nice big mouth. And they swallow those big pieces whole. Their stomach breaks down anything that it possibly can. And then they regurgitate a pellet. Uh, I have some pellets on the table if you guys see right in front of me. 
So I have a question from Brady, age 11. He's curious as to the size or the appearance of the eggs that they lay. Excellent. So let's we'll see if you want, you want to eat. Mm. So he's getting a nice mouse snack. Nice big mouse. So their eggs are um, much smaller than a chicken egg, probably about uh, a third the size of a chicken egg. Um, and they're incubated for about uh, they're incubated for about a month, and then the babies will be in the nest uh, anywhere between six and eight weeks before they start to kind of branch out, maybe start fledging. I have a question from uh, Rad, age five. He wants to know why owl eyes are so big. Excellent. So owl eyes are so big to help them see at night. So owls are generally nocturnal. This doesn't mean that they are only awake at night. It just means they're primarily awake at night. So in the spring and the summer, when they have babies to feed, you will find them up at all hours, trying to get enough food for themselves and their family of up to four chicks. Um, they can also be up during the winter as well. Anytime they see food or hear food walk by, you don't want to let a free meal go. So you're going to try to go after it if you're an owl. So generally they're up at night and those big eyes help them take in all available light and help them to see better. Um, it also helps them have different cells in the eye. So uh, there's two different kinds of cells that help you see. One helps you see colors and one helps you see in black and white. And these guys have more of those cells that help you see in black and white, which also helps them see better at night uh, and in, into shadows even. So where we see a deep shadow and we don't see anything hiding in it, um, they might be able to see uh, layers of that shadow and see food bits uh, or animals hiding in that shadow. I have a question from Riley Huppert. She wants to know, um, since uh, the owls will interbreed between the gray and the red phase, when that happens, does do, do they end up being a gray or red, or do they, is there a mixture of the two? Um, it it's all genetic, so they can end up having either red or gray babies. So they don't end up with model babies, um, but they end up either having um, gray babies, red babies, and they may have a mix. Um, it all it all depends um, on the fun genetics. And um, how did both of these owls come to be in our care? Excellent. So, um, Patches, who we're letting take a break, he's the more shy of our screech owls. Um, Patches was hit by a car and he ended up with uh, head trauma. And usually when we have uh, cases like that, we give them plenty of time to uh, recuperate. We give them outside time and then we do what's called mouse school. So we do give them a live mouse and we make sure that they can catch it, make sure that he can see. Um, one of his eyes, his right eye, uh, is non-functioning, so he can't see out of his right side. Um, and so whenever he, uh, when we put him out for mouse school, we tested it and he unfortunately failed mouse school. So he wasn't able to catch live prey on his own and we made the decision then that he should stay with us. Uh, Dopey has a little more of a tragic story. Um, he fell out of his nest when he was a baby. Um, it is always our goal when we have babies that have fallen out of the nest or become separated from their parents, it's always our goal to try to get those uh, babies back uh, there are a lot of things, thankfully, that are instinctual that we don't have to teach animals that come into us. Um, but if they aren't very good at those skills, like hunting or grooming or even talking to other owls, um, those are not things that we can teach them. So it's always great for them to go back to their parents that we're able to make sure they're getting the best education possible uh, to give them the best skills to survive. So unfortunately for Dopey, he fell out of his nest and we were unable to find the nest. We couldn't find the nest or other parents, uh, and we weren't able to put him back. So we brought him to the center. He was raised with other screech owls, and as he got older, we realized that he had some uh, neurological issues. So he's not able to fly. He has difficulty finding um, his own food. We're not sure that his eyes and his brain are talking uh, completely correctly. Um, and as a result, he does have to stay with us. All of these things that he has would not make it uh, able for him to survive in the wild. Your other snack. So um, I've had a few questions about the owl's abilities to turn their heads. Do they turn all the way around? And if so, why? 
So they can turn their head 270 degrees. So that's, uh, there's 360 degrees in a circle, uh, and it has to do with the number of bones in the neck. So humans have, from the top of your spine to the base of your skull, you have uh, seven bones, and each bone lets you turn just a little bit farther. So you can turn from one shoulder to the other. Those seven bones give you 180 degrees, so half a circle. Um, an owl this size has, uh, has 11 bones in his neck. Larger owls like the barn owl or the great horned owl, which is the biggest owl that lives in Virginia, uh, they have up to 14 bones in the neck. And each one allows them to go a little bit further. So they can go 270, that's the middle of a shoulder blade, all the way around to the middle of your other shoulder blade. Um, their head is also on a ball joint, so they can actually twist their head upside down so that they can look under and around. They can have a really good view uh, of the world around them. And it's important not only for finding food, um, but for these guys to make sure that you have an eye on the skies and all the surrounding area, uh, because they are so small. Um, and Dopey here is turning seven, so we know how old he is. We know he came in when he was about four weeks old, and he's been with us ever since. Uh, so we know that he is about seven years old, or turning seven years old, uh, and he's full grown. This is as big as they get. Weighs about six ounces. So how long is their lifespan? So again, in the wild, they'll live to be six and eight, between six and eight. Uh, in captivity, he can live to be 12 or 15, maybe a little bit older, but probably not. I have an excellent question. Um, Cheryl would like to know, in Virginia, can you keep owls as pets legally? You cannot keep owls as pets across the country. So owls are, uh, owls are protected not only by uh, state regulations, but by federal regulations. So all birds are protected by the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, and that prevents you from just having an owl as a pet. You need to have certain permits that require a lot of time and effort and proper caging, uh, and then you have to do education programs. It's a long process. Um, so not only do we have state permits that allows us to have Dopey and use him for educational events, but we also have federal permits that give us the same protections. Why do they call them screech owls? I have no idea. Um, so someone asked, why do they call them screech owls? Uh, I don't know. They do kind of make a sound that sounds like a teapot, um, but it doesn't really sound like a screech to me, so I feel like it's a bit of a misnomer. Um, if anybody screeches, it's the barn owl. They make kind of a very high-pitched growl um, that can be a little scary to hear if you're not sure, you know, there's just a sound in the darkness uh, and it's these guys, so I'm not sure why they were called screech owls. What's the top predator for a screech owl? Uh, top predator for the screech owl is everybody. Uh, they are uh, what I like to call snack size. Uh, they're very small, they can be scrappy, and they do prefer to hide in cavities so that they can uh, protect themselves. So a cavity has a small opening and they can use their beak and their talons to kind of protect themselves against predators. Uh, but being small also means they can be easy to catch uh, and sometimes to eat. So other owls even will eat these guys, great horned owls especially, uh, and sometimes the barred owl. You want your snack now? No? He's just being, just being antsy. Is there any possibility that owls from different species could interbreed, or is that impossible? I don't want to say that it's impossible. Um, there is a western screech owl that looks exactly like them, but apparently has enough uh, differences to be called a different species entirely, um, but I don't know that there is scientific proof that says those two can't intermingle. I don't know why they would, um, but I'm sure there's no reason why they absolutely can't. So, a couple questions about their nests. Um, I have Molly who wants to know, do owls have the same nest every year, or do they look for new nesting sites? And I had an earlier question um, asking what their nests look like. So, owls don't generally build nests. They will steal nests. Um, screech owls in particular, they will use uh, cavities, so natural, natural occurring cavities in trees or woodpecker nests, so the woodpeckers already made a nice opening and a nice cavity, um, and they'll use those. Sometimes um, the barn owls, they will pick a ledge and they'll regurgitate those pellets that we talked about, and they'll use the fluff from those pellets as a nesting material, um, but as far as going out and like getting sticks, 
uh, and kind of constructing something. Owls don't generally do that. They do like to steal crow and raven nests. Um, great horned owls will even use old um, eagle nests, and they'll reuse the same, uh, reuse the same sites as much as they can. Um, it's just a lot of effort to build new nests if you don't have to. So Greg had a question: um, If we find an owl in distress, how's the best way to get it to you? So the best way to help us uh, rescue owls is um, step one, to get something over top of it, and then go ahead and give us a call. Um, it's something we talk about all the time with people who give us calls about injured animals. Uh, a lot of times it may look like they can't go anywhere, but once they know that you know um, that they are injured, they start to get nervous and they will try to make it under any cover, climb a tree, even if they can't fly. So getting something over top of them to make sure that they can't disappear is always a great first step. Um, after that, you can give us a call and we'd be more than happy to talk you through the situation, uh, decide if the animal needs to come in, how the best way to contain it would be, um, and just make sure that everybody's safe, you and the animal included. Um, they can be very dangerous, again, with their talons and their beak, He's very small, but he's still very sharp. I'm still wearing a glove, uh, and we try uh, to keep you guys as safe as possible. I just like to talk. So Patrick is 11, and Veronica is 10, and they'd like to know, do you have a favorite type of owl? I don't find. Oh, um, my favorite type of owl, thank you for asking, is the great horned owl. Um, so they're, they're just this amazing, um, kind of take no nonsense bird. They're, they weigh about three and a half, sometimes four pounds, and they, they take charge. Um, they eat over 250 different species. They've been documented to eat that many different animals, uh, and they're the only animal in our area who will take on a full-grown adult skunk. They don't really have a sense of smell, so they don't care if they smell bad, um, and it's just kind of nice to have a, a take no nonsense animal. So Donna wants to know if she finds an injured owl in North Carolina, can she transport it to you? You cannot. If you find an injured animal um, out of state, um, the best thing to do would be to contact local rehabilitators within your state. Um, you can uh, either try to find those numbers online by looking up wildlife rehabilitators, or you can try by calling your Department of Natural Resources, whatever that might be called. Here in Virginia, we have our Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, but I know uh, that differs uh, depending on the states. So again, always kind of put something over top of it. If you're unable to find anybody, you can call us and we can try to help you find those numbers, uh, but there's no transport of uh, wildlife across state lines. So I have a question um, from Rad and Kylie. They want to know, do owls have one mate like penguins or different mates each year? Excellent. So do they have one mate or do they take different ones? They generally have one. So they will pick a mate and those two, they will establish territories that overlap. Um, so they'll have next door territories that they live in most of the year. And then they'll find a nice spot in the middle uh, to raise their nest in. So they'll have their nest there, raise their babies, and that gives them both territories to try to find enough food uh, for the whole family. Generally speaking, they'll keep the same mate for life. If they are young enough and something happens to the mate, it is possible that they'll choose another one, but year after year, they will pick the same mate. So Molly would like to know, how many different owl species are there in Virginia? So in Virginia, there are four species that live here year round. We have the Eastern Screech Owl, we have the Barred Owl, the Barn Owl, which are two different guys, um, and the Great Horned Owl, and those live here all year. Uh, and then we have species that migrate down. We have the short-eared owl, the long-eared owl, even snowy owls will come all the way down in, into Virginia during the winter. So we have a couple species that migrate up and down. So a couple questions uh, about screech owls in general. Mm -hmm. um, how long is Dopey's wing in size? And how many eggs do they typically have at one time? So they'll lay anywhere between two and four eggs uh, at, at one time. Um, it's not guaranteed that all of them will hatch, nor that all of them will make it. So they do lay uh, up to four, uh, and typically they'll raise two chicks um, fairly well. Um, and their wingspan on average is between 18 and 24 inches. So uh, a foot and a half to two feet. 
And as, as I said earlier, and I wasn't sure if you heard, he weighs about six ounces, um, which is equivalent to uh, a baseball, about how much a baseball weighs. Or a hockey puck. Found that out. So what type of things do the tree cows eat? So anything small that they can carry. Um, primarily they like small rodents, um, shrews or voles, small mice, uh, but they will also take large insects, small lizards, small snakes, uh, pretty much anything that they can catch and then carry to safety so that they have uh, a quiet covered spot to eat it. Generally for these guys, if they're flying, they'll fly 75 feet or so at a time from hiding spot to hiding spot. Um, they don't do a lot of long distance flying, uh, again, because they are so small uh, and that's a very vulnerable way to be. So they'll fly from a hiding spot to a hiding spot, hopefully find food and then go back up into a tree to eat it in safety. So Griffin's eight years old and he wants to know how they made it. Mm -hmm. That is an ask your mom question. How did Dopey get his name? So uh, Dopey got his name because we generally don't uh, we generally don't name our uh, patients here at the center. So they uh, when they come in they receive a number, uh, and that way we can keep track of them throughout their time here. But we don't get overly attached to animals that we plan on releasing. Uh, however, when we have a lot of animals in a cage, uh, we sometimes give them qualifiers. So when Dopey was here as a baby. He was in with seven, there were seven total screech owls in together. And so whenever we were talking about them, we would say the really big one or the gray one. Uh, and in his case, he was just a little dopey. He was just a little funny. Um, and he just acted a little strange. And so we said, you know, the dopey one. And when we did decide to keep him, we'd been calling him the dopey one for about nine months. And it was really hard for us to come up with another name for him. Um, so it just kind of stuck. So when these guys are out in the wild, do they more often perch in high up in trees or more towards the ground? Um, they're gonna be kind of in the middle uh, of the tree for safety. Um, for feeding, they're gonna come down a little bit lower, um, but as long as they're up against the trunk really is what they're, um, they're gonna hide as close as they can um, to that trunk so that there's less uh, sides that are exposed. Um, they do prefer as well to find a cavity usually to nest in during the day. Um, and you'll often see them, it's kind of funny, um, you'll see what looks like a, a knot in the tree. Um, and then if you look really closely, it is a, a small knot that they're just kind of sitting in like it's a bowl. Uh, and they're all puffed up to make it look like it's um, completely covered over and there's not an owl in there. So always look twice. Why do they have feathers sticking up like horns? So those are, great word, they're called plumicorns, and they are groups of feathers, if you'll let me do it, no, they're groups of feathers that they use for their camouflage. So when they hide up against a tree, they'll put those up so that they, they give them a jagged appearance because things in nature generally aren't smooth, things up in a tree aren't smooth and rounded. And so for an animal that's looking for a snack, if they see something rounded in a tree, they're going to want to investigate. Whereas if he's got his, uh, his horns up, his, or what's called his ears, even though they aren't, they're his fake ears. If he has those up, he looks like a broken branch. It gives him a jagged appearance um, to help him blend in better for safety. So what is Dopey's particular favorite food? Uh, he likes mice, um, but in all honesty, he'll eat anything, which is another reason that he's here with us. As, uh, as he got older, we noticed that he um, was per perfectly happy eating inappropriate food sources, um, rocks, pine needles, newspaper, um, which is another reason that we decided it was best for him to stay with us, because if he were out in the wild and he ate a whole bunch of things that weren't food, and felt full and didn't then go eat real food, um, we figured that would be a problem for him. So we decided at that point, we're gonna keep an eye on him. Um, but he really does like mice, but he's also eaten mealworms, fish, um, venison he's okay with. Uh, but I would, I would say mice are probably still his favorite. Jennifer would like to know, what is the smallest owl? Uh, the smallest owl is, uh, is called the elf owl. 
and it's it's just a little guy. Um, they do live here, I believe, in North America, but not not here in Virginia. Um, the the smallest owl um, besides him that you guys would see is the northern sawwit owl, which is is just a couple inches shorter uh, than he is. And they're here in the winter. So Jess wants to know, can't they do something cool with their feet? Uh, they can. So if you notice, he is standing with two toes in the front and two toes in the back. So birds in general have four toes and they sit on average, most of them sit with three toes in the front and one in the back. And this is a really good um, perching. It's really good for grabbing prey. They have that strong uh, toe in the back that they can squeeze with. Um, but owls are special. They can actually swing this outer toe. They can swing their outer toe to the back and sit with two toes in the front and two toes in the back like woodpeckers. And this actually makes them excellent climbers. Um, so baby owls, once they start to um, fledge and get some feathers, uh, they're at a stage of what's called brancher. So they're out of the nest, they're walking around on the branches. If they fall out of the nest, they're able to um, use their feet and their beak to kind of grab onto the tree. And then they flap their wings and they kind of half fly, half climb up the tree branch. Um, back into the nest, so that's really um, a great adaptation that they have. So uh, Deanna, age seven, would like to know, how do you do the mouse test? So when we do the mouse test, we get a really big tub, and we put a mouse in it, and we put a camera out there so we can watch and see what happens, and we just let the owl do his work. And if we catch sight of him uh, flying down and successfully catching the mouse, then we know that He's good to go, he can see prey, he can catch it, he can fly well enough, uh, and we're able to release them based on that. So when we tried to do the mouse test for patches, he never even tried. So he either didn't see it or um, couldn't catch it, but we never got him on camera trying to go down uh, and catch that mouse. And then we give them three tries to do that um, here, just to make sure maybe they're nervous, maybe they're not hungry enough, um, so we'll try it for a couple days, give him a break, try it again, uh, and he failed all three times. And three strikes, unfortunately, is all we can give. How long do great horned owls live? Uh, so great horned owls live a little bit longer. Um, they might live to be um, 15 or, or 20 or so um, in the wild, and in captivity they can live to be maybe 30. And are screech owls more common than barred owls? Um, I'm not sure. I want to say they're, they're both in good numbers here um, in Virginia. Uh, barred owls you're probably going to see more often, um, but screech owls you'll hear more. Um, even though they're a, a small owl, they generally seem to talk a lot, um, communicate across the, the spaces more than other owls do. Um, but I wouldn't say that one is particularly more abundant than the other. Erica would like to know, are they provided with any types of toys to play with? So yes and no. So Dopey unfortunately doesn't get a lot of toys um, because of his issue where he will eat things that he's not supposed to. Um, so we try to do uh, enrichment in other ways for him. So we'll give him uh, new surfaces to walk on. We might take him outside. Uh, doing a program is enrichment because they get to go to a new place and see new people um, and that's always uh, something that stimulates them, whether it's good or bad, um, we're not sure. But for the rest of our education animals, we do try to do what's called enrichment, and we do give them um, toys or ways to kind of uh, forage for their food, whether it's a puzzle that they have to figure out or a scent that they have to, to sniff out and find. Um, so we do try to, to change, their, uh, change their environment uh, as often as we can. How long are Dopey's legs? Excellent question. I have not measured, but they're longer than you think. They're kind of perpetually crouched, um, I found. So when they stretch out, you can see um, on Barnaby how long owl legs are. Um, they generally keep them tucked up in a way, and they'll only put them, um, they'll only put them down um, when it's time to catch something. They'll extend them out. Um, so they, they're longer than you think. Um, they're, this is only about half the leg that you're seeing. And Crystal was wondering, and I think I had some other questions about this as well, if someone wanted to build a nesting box for owls, what type of materials should they use and where would they put it so that it would be more likely to be used? 
saw something. Um, so the, the Owl Box is a, is a great uh, a tool to try. There are plenty of uh, uh, designs and plans that you can find online uh, about how big to make it, how big to make the opening. Uh, and then unfortunately, you just have to try. So you have to hang it in a tree. Um, usually they recommend, I think it's something like 50 feet off the ground. Um, to start and then if you have to hope and if they don't move in after a season then you have to move it Maybe it's facing the wrong direction. Maybe it's too high in the tree. Maybe it's too low um, Unfortunately, there's no um, There's no perfect equation to say this box at this height in this direction um, It just depends on the owls that you have and especially if you live in a forest that has a lot of other options um, it's not something uh, they're not more likely to pick the box over a natural cavity. So if they already have a nest and it's working well for them, they're not going to move out of that nest into your nesting box. So the most you can do is try. But we do encourage trying, um, especially with a lot of the habitat loss and things going on. Um, dead trees aren't usually allowed to stand uh, very long. So it's always good to give, uh, to give them options. How much weight can they carry? Not a lot. <laughs> um, so they can't carry a lot of weight. Again, they want to make sure it's something small enough that they can um, take off. I think the, the general rule is they, they can't carry more than their own body weight. So he's only six ounces, um, so he's not going to carry more than that. And, and generally, they're not going to be carrying up to six ounces either. Um, flight and, and speed. Speed of escape is important for these guys. All right. Well, we want to thank you guys so much for joining us for learning about Dopey. Um, please remember to like and subscribe to our page and let us know in the comments if you would like to see more um, education uh, programs like this here on our Facebook page. Um, we're also, um, we uh, are run completely on donations. We don't get any state or federal funding. So if you are able to, um, if you can donate, we would really appreciate that. We do have a button on our Facebook page as well as donation options through our website. So thank you guys again for joining us and you have a great afternoon.